Nvidia has officially announced the RTX 4080 and the RTX 4090. The 4090 will release on October the 12th for $1,600. The 4080 will have two different models. One model will be $900 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The other model will be $1,200 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, the elephant in the room here is, where's the 4070? Why didn't Nvidia announce a 4070? If you look at the last announcement for graphics cards, we had a 3070, a 3080, and a 3090. And the 3070 was well positioned at 499 MSRP. So what's going on here? Well, at first glance, if you look at the two different 4080 models, it's easy to make the assumption that they are the exact same card with just different amounts of VRAM. However, if you dig deeper into the specifications of the cards, you'll see that the 4080 12 gigabyte model actually has less CUDA cores. This is in fact a very different card. These are not the same card with just different amounts of VRAM. These are two different cards. And looking at one of the more recent charts that Nvidia has released, you can see that the 4080 12 gigabyte model is consistently underperforming when compared to the 4080 16 gigabyte model. In fact, the 4080 12 gigabyte model seems to be more in line with that of a 3090 or 3090 Ti. Now look, the prices are high and no one is ever happy with seeing a price increase on any product or service, but sometimes you can at least justify or make peace with that price increase if you see the value there, if you feel like you're getting more for your money. But I have a very, very bad feeling about these cards, and let me talk about why. Okay, so first of all, if you look at the conference itself, it was over an hour and a half long, and the 40 series cards themselves were only talked about for maybe 20 minutes, and that's pushing it. Whereas previously with the 30 series graphics card announcement, it was this big event where the entire presentation was all about the graphics cards. They talked about the 3070, the 3080, the 3090. Jensen got on stage and even made a plea to Pascal gamers and said it is safe to upgrade now. He was really trying to drive it home that this is a true next generational leap and that everybody should get on board. They talked about how the 3070 could even outperform a 2080 Ti for $700 less, which was insane at the time. There was just so many things around that event that really made it feel special. Whereas when I look at this conference, all I can see are red flags. The 40 series announcement felt like a footnote in the grand scheme of the conference itself. In fact, it felt like an afterthought, like it was never supposed to be part of the announcement, but then Nvidia said, well, we're a publicly traded company and AMD confirmed that they plan to release their cards this year. And so it felt like the 40 series cards were just put in there to, to really just please people. So the main thing that Jensen harped on is the same thing that he's basically been harping on for the last few graphics card generations, and that is ray tracing and DLSS. DLSS is now 3.0, and recently a vice president of NVIDIA came out and confirmed that DLSS 3.0 will only work on the 40 series cards. In my opinion, if they ever do put DLSS 3.0 on the 30 and 20 series cards, that will give you even less of a reason to buy into the 40 series cards as that is basically the main selling point of the 40 series cards. Okay, here's my problem with DLSS. So DLSS 3.0 is doing two very bad things. First of all, it's inserting fake frames. Maybe you have two real legitimate frames being rendered, but there is time in between generating both frames. So now what they're doing is they're inserting a fake frame based on the data of the previous frame and the upcoming frame, and they're formulating a third frame. It's also introducing the second problem, which is latency. Now for a game like Skyrim or Cyberpunk or something like that, that may not be that big of a deal, but for a competitive based first person shooter, that is 
huge. Now, NVIDIA claims they plan to use their NVIDIA Reflex to combat this issue, and NVIDIA Reflex works, and it works quite well. But now in the first-person shooter, you can normally just turn on NVIDIA Reflex and enjoy all the additional benefits of lower latency. Now, if you use DLSS 3.0 and you turn on NVIDIA Reflex, it's not going to give you as much of a benefit as it used to, because instead of it just lowering your overall system latency, it's now having to lower the latency of DLSS 3.0 and get you back to where you were previously. So it's not really a good use case based on what I've been reading for competitive based games. And so in my opinion, that's not great. The bigger issue is where are the raw rasterization benchmarks? Where are the native resolutions? Here's something that you have to understand that many people, so many people still do not understand. DLSS is not a native resolution. When you look at the benchmarks that NVIDIA provided, at the very bottom of those benchmarks, it says 4K, highest end game settings. You're like, oh, okay, cool, 4K, highest settings. That's good. But then you read DLSS. And what that means is that depending on the preset they chose to use, which they did not specify, it could be rendering either at 1440p or even 1080p and then upscaling to 4K. DLSS quality mode, which I've spoken about before, will use a 1440p native resolution and upscale it to 4K. And anything other than DLSS quality mode will use 1080p and upscale that to 4K. The image will look good and the frames will be higher, but it is not a native resolution. It is not a true 4K. It's the same thing we used to call out consoles for back in the Xbox One and PS4 days with the fake 4K. Okay, look, I'm not knocking DLSS. I know it sounds like I am, but I'm really not. It is truly a phenomenal piece of technology. I've used it in some circumstances. And in fact, there are some situations where it does make sense to use it. I'm not against NVIDIA trying to improve the technology. I'm not against AMD trying to improve their FSR technology. However, what I am against is whenever these technologies become the main selling point of the new cards. That's a problem. And now you may challenge me and say, well, that's not the main selling point. These cards have other features. Look at what they said. The announcement itself was barely 20 minutes long. And the main thing they talked about was ray tracing and mostly DLSS. And when you look at the only benchmarks that were shown off for that day, at the bottom of that chart, all you see is where DLSS was used for the entire thing. There is no raw rasterization benchmarks listed on that chart. Now, after the conference, NVIDIA did release another chart that does include some raw rasterization, at least that's what we can assume, but we don't actually know that because once again, at the bottom, all you see is that they said, we used DLSS where applicable, which I can assume means some games were ran with DLSS and some games were ran without it, but the chart does absolutely nothing to tell you which games are using ray tracing, which games are using DLSS, and which games are all raw rasterization. You're basically looking at nothing at that point. You have nothing to really infer on the data. Now look, maybe I'm wrong, but I do have to question, what is Nvidia trying to hide? Why not just show a straight up raw benchmark head to head apples to apples of native resolutions with no DLSS, no smoke and mirrors, no fake frames, nothing like that. Why not just give us some raw rasterization benchmarks? What are they hiding? I have to ask that question. Are we truly about to get a brand new product launch where the raw rasterization benchmarks will not be that much further ahead than the 30 series? I hope not, but it's starting to look like that's what it would be. Now to finish this point up, if you still don't believe me, go back and look at the cyberpunk demonstration they were showing off with DLSS 3.0. They were trying to show off that DLSS 3.0 will give a radical performance increase, but in doing so, they also showed their biggest weakness. Over on the left-hand side, you can see that it clearly says DLSS is turned off, but ray tracing is turned on. Look at the frame rate, 22 FPS. In what world? is a $1,600, $4090 acceptable with a 22 FPS limit, even with ray tracing on. 
That is absolutely unacceptable. To me, that makes the card look terrible. And yes, I did confirm that demonstration was in fact ran with a 4090. Now I will tell you what I am looking forward to, and that is the new AMD cards. Now, AMD has an opportunity here. AMD has already confirmed that they will release their new cards on November the 3rd. That means we will get an announcement of those cards sometime between now and then. And I plan to do a full video on it just like I'm doing right now. So make sure you stay tuned for that and get subscribed so you don't miss it. I think this is what AMD needs to do. All AMD needs to do is match the 30 series cards in terms of ray tracing, just raw ray tracing, continue to improve their FSR technology to match DLSS, undercut Nvidia on the pricing, which shouldn't be too hard, they typically do that anyway, and go pound for pound in terms of raw rasterization on the 40 series cards. If AMD can do that, or even if they can just get close to raw rasterization, but the price is significantly cheaper, then AMD is really going to be a force to be reckoned with this generation, and they're probably going to be the manufacturer of choice. That's my prediction. But hey, if you want to see how I predicted the pricing of the 40 series cards, check out this video right here. And that's all I got for you. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E-Rock out.